a grand temple honoring the sun god. There is a magnificent temple dedicated to the sun god where once a floating idol of the deity existed. This temple is believed to have been built by Lord Krishna's son. Known for its architectural beauty, this ancient structure stood as a deserted ruin in a dense forest for many years. Located just a few kilometers from Puri in Odisha, the small town of Konark is home to this splendid temple made of stone, situated on the seashore. As you approach the main entrance of the temple, you are greeted by colossal statues of lions attacking elephants, which in turn are crushing humans underfoot. These statues symbolize human vices, with the lion representing pride and the elephant symbolizing wealth, both of which can destroy a person's life if they become addicted to them. It is believed that King Narasimhadeva Thurifi of the Eastern Ganga dynasty constructed the first sun temple in Konark in 1254 CE. However, according to the story in the Samba Purana, it was built by Samba, the son of Lord Krishna. Samba was known for his mischievous behavior, which greatly troubled Krishna. Despite Krishna's efforts to discipline him, Samba continued to defy his father, leading Krishna to curse him with leprosy. Samba endured this painful disease for many years until he met the sage Kautka, who advised him to worship the sun god and perform penance for 12 years. Samba's devotion pleased the sun god, who blessed him and cured his disease. In gratitude, Samba vowed to build a temple in honor of the sun god, leading to the construction of the first sun temple in Konark. The walls of the Konark sun temple are adorned with numerous erotic sculptures depicting various intimate acts and positions. Built in the Kalinga architectural style, the temple reflects a blend of spirituality and modernity. It is said that King Narasimhadeva Bharadan, had a deep interest in archaeology and wanted this temple to symbolize both religious devotion and contemporary aesthetics. He commissioned the renowned architect Vishu Maharana to construct the temple in such a way that the first rays of the sun would illuminate the deity's idol in the Sanctum Sanctorum every morning. The temple is designed as a colossal chariot drawn by seven horses, representing the seven days of the week and the seven colors of the rainbow. The 24 wheels of the chariot symbolize the 12 months of the year and function as sundials, allowing accurate time calculation using the sun's rays even today. It is believed that the temple once housed a floating idol of the sun god achieved by a 52-ton natural magnet placed at the top and iron plates and magnets used to connect stones below, creating a diamagnetic field. This phenomenon was understood by the 12-year-old son of Bhuvan Maharana, Dharmapada, who demonstrated how to balance a third magnet in this field, enabling the idol to float in mid-air. However, the temple soon lost its grandeur. In 1508, General Kalapahad of Sultan Suleiman Khan Karani attacked Odisha and destroyed many temples, including the Sun Temple of Konark. During the attack, Kalapahad removed the keystone of the main tower, causing the 200-foot-high structure to collapse into ruins. With the advent of Islamic rule in Odisha, the temple was neglected, and its idol was hidden in the sand by priests to protect it from destruction. Some historians believe that natural calamities like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions also contributed to the temple's decline. In 1837, Scottish historian James Ferguson explored Connarch and studied the temple, bringing it to international attention. By 1900 CE, British post governor John Woodburn initiated restoration and conservation efforts, transforming the temple into a cultural and tourist site. However, the British sealed the main entrance with sand for reasons that remain a mystery. Recognizing its unique architecture and cultural significance, UNESCO declared the Konark Sun Temple a World Heritage Site in 1984. The Archaeological Survey of India continues to uncover the temple's secrets, revealing the advanced knowledge of our ancestors. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments.